Taylor Cormier, Howie's executive producer, filling in for Howie today. He'll be back tomorrow. We've been talking this uh, the show a lot about critical race theory in the classroom. We told you all about the NEA's agenda, and they've laid it out very, very clearly. And we also read to you from Issues and Insights, their call to action for a lot of parents and teachers to stand up to critical race theory because it is a very, very dangerous way of thinking uh, and a very dangerous way for the school to involve themselves in your child's life and upbringing. They, they're really sinking their claws into your child, your most precious commodity, and trying to mold them into what they want them to be. That is not their job. And uh, it's, it's, as I said, a very dangerous way of thinking. Joining us now is a parent, is a teacher who's looking to do something about it. His name is Greg Dolan. He's running for Fox Chapel Area School Director in Pennsylvania. Greg, thanks so much for coming on the show today. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Taylor. It's my pleasure to be here. Sure. So tell us what your, uh, you're a U.S. history teacher, and what, what, what is taught in U.S. history these days that critical race theory doesn't think is, is uh, doing the job? Well, whenever I tell people that I'm a U.S. history teacher, the first question I always get is, do you teach the real history? And I say, yes, of course. Oh, and well, do, do you teach the honest history? That's, that's what uh, Randy yes, Weingarten is right. saying. Yes. Yeah. I, see, I said this morning, on I was on Fox and Friends this morning talking about the same thing. And when she gets afraid of saying what she calls the truth I, and, and being attacked for it, I've never thought that I need legal defense when I'm speaking the truth. I don't have any qualms about speaking the truth to the students in my classroom and engaging over that. And that truth involves a lot of coming up short in America. In our classroom, we talk about how America's come up short, but we also talk about what it accomplished along the way while it still came up short. That's the story of humanity. That's what humans do. We come up short, but we strive to do better. And that's what America did, and that's what I try and instill in my students to appreciate about this country. And that's what CRT robs us of. Critical race theory robs students of the ability to see that they can do better. It tells them that they're born into a group, and they're born a certain way, and they just can't get out of it. All they can do is feel bad about it. And just teaching shame and victimhood is not right. I prefer to teach knowledge and virtue. So what, what periods of history, of U.S. history, do you typically cover? We, we do the whole thing. We, we start uh, with Columbus, and we work our way forward all the way up until uh, the, the Reagan era is usually about where you can get to before the, the allure of summer starts to settle in. So Columbus, you're already starting off on the wrong foot, because uh, you're probably not teaching the children that he, you know, brought uh, death to indigenous people, right? Right. <laughs> you, you you talk about the, the courage of a guy to get on a boat and sail where people didn't know exactly where he was going to end up. The maps literally just thought that it was a quick wraparound uh, over to the to China, and that's what he was trying to accomplish, but he ended up finding a whole other side of the world. I talk about a guy with courage. You know, we, we read about what people thought about him at the time and what he said himself about what he was trying to do. It's very inspiring. Did he do everything that we would want when he got there? No. But he was trying to live in a, he came from a certain world and he tried to live it out as courageously as possible. And there's a lot of nobility in that that gets lost when you just boil it down to here's a bad thing someone did. No one's going to meet that standard ever, Taylor. Never. So, Greg, is it, the NEA, is there any credence to what they say that our history, our racist, terrible, indigenous, slaughtering history, does that still affect us today? Is there any credence to that claim? Well, it only affects us in the same way that, that, learn, that we need to talk about it and we need to know that it happened. I, I'm hard-pressed to say that the students in my classroom in front of me are in any way guilty or need to apologize to their fellow classmates for what happened in the past. We need to talk about it. We need to address what this country is made up of as a part of its history uh, in full. So we need to talk about the Trail of Tears. We need to talk about uh, how we uh, treated. We, we live in Western Pennsylvania here in my in the school district I'm running in. And the Indian Wars were fought right on our, on our frontier here. And we need to talk about how we grappled with those. But we don't need to say that the people today need to uh, carry the sins of their fathers, which is what, to me, critical race theory tries to impose on students. 
is critical race theory already being introduced into the classrooms? It's it's part of the proposal here from the NEA. They they say that it's not being taught in the classrooms yet. In my school district, our we passed a George Floyd resolution last year, 9-0 on our school board to say that they needed to undertake anti-racism strategies because, quote, implicit and explicit racism was going on in our district. And so I, I take that as critical race theory is running rampant in our schools. If it's not in every classroom yet, it's going to be soon. And the time to stop it is now by running for school board. And that's what I'm trying to do is make sure that this poisonous ideology doesn't take hold in our school district. The time to speak up is right when they tell you what they're going to do, not after they've done it. Part of this uh, this proposal here uh, that's on their agenda is to join with Black Lives Matter at school, the Zinn Education Project, call for a rally this year on October 14th, George Floyd's birthday, as a national day of action to teach lessons about structural racism and oppression, even in places where it is illegal and requires civil disobedience. Does that sound to you like something that should be taking place in a school? Yeah, it starts to sound a lot more like politics and not like teaching history and civics. And that, and I find that to be very much uh, problematic might be a good word that we could use. Uh, my, my local school district is an NEA affiliate, so this has been very troubling to me because I do think that we have current teachers in place that are not uh, gung-ho about doing this to their students and that don't want to say, like some of the training materials that the four-year-olds in preschool are that they need to be looked at for uh, racist tendencies and implicit bias. That's what their current uh, professional development materials tell our teachers to to worry about. I don't think our teachers are there, but our school board is there, and I fear that means our administrators are there next. And then eventually the teachers will be there. So it's time to stop it is now, and that's why I'm running. Ultimately, they have to they have to answer to the union, right? Yes. Ultimately, the the union message is another one where it's going to trickle down into the teachers' training and what they're taught and how they're forced to uh, adapt materials that they get. Right. So that's what's so worrisome about the teachers' union being so forward about saying critical race theory is something that they want to protect and defend. Uh, when this when this ideology, it changes the nature of the classroom. It says that the student next to you is different from you, and you must have an adversarial relationship with him if he looks different, that you're naturally inclined to think less of him. That's a dangerous way to start to, to raise our kids, and it's a way that we had gotten away from for a long time, and that I thought we celebrated in this country that we had gotten away from thinking that people were different based on the way they look. But it seems like some people want to drag us right back to that in a in a way to uh, take us take us backwards. It's not very progressive to me. It's very regressive. So that that leads to my next question. A lot of us were blindsided with this this proposition of critical race theory, leaving us to ask the question: Where did this come from? Where in our public education system did this turn take place where, where we just started down this progressive path? I had some, one of the callers call up and uh, he said he's got a copy of the NEA's report from 1947 that, that had some pretty extremist uh, text in it. Uh, where, where, in your lifetime, did this take place or, or does, this, uh, is, does this predate us? I think that it predates us a little bit. I know that the Howard Zinn People's History of the United States has been a worrisome textbook for a while. And I've heard tell from teachers who are a little more seasoned than I am that even in the 90s that the New York State system was demanding that uh, your uh, certificate application, you had to explain how your social justice, what your social justice credentials were. And Maybe maybe we're slow to the gate to uh, to get after this one, but now that everyone has recognized it, I think it's time to fight it. It's the number one priority on my list of things that I pledge to do as a school director in, in my area. If you go to my website, gregdolan.com, G-R-E-G-D-O-L-A-N.com, you can see that the number one issue I'm going to fight on is stopping the indoctrination of critical race theory. I think it's that important, and I think it's a litmus test if you get this right, should we teach shame and victimhood to students or should we not? I think if you get that question right, you're going to get a lot of other things 
right in a school district. But if you get it wrong, you're going to get everything else wrong. So it's not the only thing I'm running on. I'm talking about our spending and our uh, our poor textbook choices in some areas. I'm doing a curriculum review of what we have. But it's the first issue, because if you can't get that simple question right, Taylor, you're really far, far behind the eight ball, and I don't trust you on anything else. Well, and I think it speaks to the broader question of where do we diverge and go from teaching the children the facts of the matter to telling them how to think about the facts of the matter and how to think it, it imp- impacts their life and their outlook on society. That's not something that I want the government, I want the public school system to be a part of in any way, shape, or form. Th- there's a line that they're overstepping uh, from teaching to parenting. Yeah, and that's always a fine balance that we face as teachers. And it does seem like this one goes goes overboard, and especially the way that the backlash now, we're being told that actually critical race theory isn't in the schools. But if it were, it'd be okay as a way to teach. But also, it's only for law schools. These are the comments that I get constantly trying to gaslight and deflect and change the subject from the actual merits or lack thereof of critical race theory. And so as soon as people start telling you that, well, the thing that you think is bad isn't being taught, I think that means that they know that the game is up and that we're on to them. I'm sure you've heard the cut a hundred times today, but I just want to play it again for our listeners here. This is Randy Weidengarten uh, talking about how she says critical race theory is not in our school system. She basically just says uh, what you just said, Greg, what, uh, what the rhetoric is. Cut seven, Jared. Critical race theory is not taught in elementary schools or middle schools or high schools. It's a method of examination taught in law school and in college that helps analyze whether systemic racism exists and in particular whether it has an effect on law and public policy. But cultural warriors are labeling any discussion of race, racism, or discrimination as CRT to try to make it toxic. They are bullying teachers and trying to stop us from teaching students accurate history. Are you a cultural warrior, Greg Dolan? Uh, only for a positive outlook of a patriotic America in our schools. If that makes me a culture warrior, then sign me up. But I am willing to go to war against a, an ideology that says that students should look at each other opposite and, and as adversaries, and that says that we can't actually join together because we happen to look different on the inside. You know, the way you're born, you can't control. What you can control is everything uh, afterward. And I try to let my students know that and inspire them to be in charge of, of who they're going to come out to be. I will say Randy is right in one thing. The, the CRT is not taught in middle school, but that's like saying that quantum physics isn't taught in middle school. You, you learn about atoms and the building blocks. Well, what they're trying to do is teach our children the building blocks of critical race theory so that when they get to law school, they understand it and it's natural to them and it's obvious that they should think of each other as in different groups. So yeah, the term critical race theory applies to a law school theory, or a law school uh, idea, but it doesn't mean that, that it doesn't trickle into what we're doing. So it, again, they're playing semantics, they're playing word games by trying to trick you into thinking that it doesn't apply, and that's how we know that we're on to them. And, and they keep all the language around it very vague, which, which I think is a very deceptive tactic as well. Uh, is there, if you were to recommend one resource to people who want to learn more about critical race theory and, and how it's harming our children in public schools, where would you direct them? Oh, I think that anything that our friend Christopher Rufo is putting out, R-U-F-O, uh, is usually a good source to stop uh, stop by wherever he's uh, talking about. Uh, I, I'm I'm hard to pin down on one exact title just because it is so slippery, and that's what they've done. You really have to notice these words and be able to pick up on it. 
Um, so it is frustratingly vague. Uh, but the, the 1776 uh, PAC is also another group that has a bunch of good resources. And the last one that's coming to mind is Parents Defending Education. They do a good job of a curriculum alternatives. So sometimes we get criticized uh, for being uh, attacking CRT but not providing other resources. Well, Parents Defending Education has a whole list there for those that are interested. Uh, in my classroom, I prefer to just read real texts of, of primary sources of what people said at different points in history. Yeah, and that's the best way to do it. From just doing that, exactly. Greg, thanks so much. Best of luck to you in your race. Keep us posted on what's going on. Thank you again. We appreciate your time. That's Greg Dolan. Uh, folks, before we go to break, i got to tell you about the Eden Pure Thunderstorm. The BOGO deal is back due to the incredible response. They're continuing the Thunderstorm BOGO offer for one more week. Over 10, 100,000 units. What am I, Joe Biden? Over 100,000 units sold in counting. Thunderstorm Air Purify is sweeping the nation because people everywhere are raving about how well it works to get rid of odors, kill mold, mildew, and to freshen the air. It starts working in a matter of minutes to cleanse the air in your home and to help you start breathing better, and there are no costly air filters to replace, saving you hundreds of bucks each year. Find out what you've been missing. Get a thunderstorm for yourself. Eden Pure guarantees the thunderstorm to get rid of any odor or your money back. Right now, Eden Pure is offering a BOGO to our listeners. Buy one, get one free. All odors are gone in no time with the Eden Pure thunderstorm. Go to EdenPureDeals.com. Put in code word Howie BOGO. That's EdenPureDeals.com. Code word Howie BOGO. Hurry, these will sell out quickly, so don't delay. Shipping is free.